But um, I wanted to tune back in so we can really talk about uh, the importance of branding and marketing. I think that's a good subject for us to have today. Um, a lot of people have been seeing me advertise on, uh, on my Facebook page that we make logos, um, we print t-shirts, flyers, business cards, we make websites, uh, things of that nature. And to piggyback on what we were talking about as far as why is it so hard to get out of our own way. Um, what I mean by that is that sometimes when, we, when it's time for us to invest in ourselves, I'm noticing that we stand in fear, but we would spend all day, but we won't invest in ourselves. And I don't think a lot of us understand the difference between investing versus spending. And it's okay to, to admit that you don't know these things, even though it sounds simple, it sounds cliche, but we don't have schools that properly teach us as entrepreneurs the fundamentals or you know financial literacy or things of these natures. So until we can pretty much build a community and say, hey, I don't know this, can you show your education with me? That's the only way that we'll be able to learn these things. So um, I want to talk about branding and marketing in particular and investing in yourself and how investing in branding and marketing can help your business rather than just spending, spending, spending on different things that really don't matter. Um, for example, a logo. Uh, that's the first, that's the starting point. Uh, many people come to me personally after someone made them a logo that they can't use. And that's the starting point for any business because um, if a person can't identify your logo, they can't identify the work that your brand has touched. For example, if Nike would have made tuna shoes for 20 years that you've worn, and you see Michael Jordan on one shoe, you see LeBron James on one shoe, you see Kobe on one shoe, but it never had a Nike logo on it, and a man introduces himself to you today as the CEO of a company called Nike and tells you that his company made the shoe that you're wearing in that very moment, he won't matter to you, she won't matter to you, um, what they tell you won't matter. And that's because they didn't have something you were familiar with to see on all of those things to trace back, and it's called a logo. So, um, but now let's vice versa that, and let's say for 20 years you've been living and you've been seeing people wearing a, t a shoe and a t-shirt and, you know, NBA jerseys and TV commercials and things of this nature, and you see just a simple swoosh on everything. Now, it doesn't say Nike, you know, sometimes we do on top of the swoosh, but uh, for the most part, it's just a swoosh, it's a logo. And when you see that logo, it's branded in a way where you know exactly what it means, you know exactly what it stands for. And when the person finally introduced himself and say, hey, you've been wearing my product, this is my company, you'll probably fall out of your pants, you know, or you'll you know, jump out of your skin to say, hey, I met Fio Knight, the CEO of Nike. And that's because his work has been seen and stamped. And that's an example of how creating a logo for your own business can help you. Um, your logo walks in a room that your feet don't walk into. And if you get a, a logo, and I won't just necessarily say if you get a cheap one, because the amount of money you spend on it don't necessarily mean that it's valuable. But if you have one made by someone that doesn't understand what to make it for for your growth, or you know to make it to where you have the necessary files for when you're ready to get it printed on a t-shirt or to get it put on a flyer or to put it in the background on a video or to make a store sign or to put it on side of a vehicle. If they don't make it for that with those things in mind, you're gonna have to get another logo made in the future to be, anyway, which means that you're gonna have to hustle backwards in that, in that sense. Now that's no different from saying, um, I've been living for 30 years, my face is my logo. This is what you get used to seeing when you hear my name. And let's say, because something happened, my first step wasn't like I had to change my whole face and put a whole nother one on this same body with the same knowledge, same history of everything I've ever done. And now I, re I introduce myself to you and you know who I am, but you see a different face. But I tell you to keep in consideration the reason I changed my face was because the first person to put a face on my neck, basically they did something wrong and I had to redo it. That's no different from you saying I got a logo and you brand it for three years, and three years later you find out you're not positioned for the next step. And the face of your business, which is what your logo is, you have to change that, and you have to reintroduce everything that you ever did behind that logo, because your first step was wrong, similar to the scenario I just gave if I had to change my face. Um, after you get a logo, um, a lot of people just say, I got one made now, and I say, let me see it, and they have to show me their phone but they may have on a t-shirt that says Tommy Hilfiger. Got on a t-shirt that say another brand or another major, North Face, anything of that nature. 
but the North Face will never tell you thank you for wearing their hoodie or their jacket into your business meeting, but you advertising them and not you. Let's say, for example, if we tell you the price of a logo and the jacket or the piece of material you have on costs more than the logo itself that you would be able to replicate and put on other things that can bring you more income in the future, we would rather spend than invest. And we spend on other things rather than investing in self. And that goes back to the video I did just before this, which is the question I asked is why is it so hard for us to get out of our own way? We would spend on other things rather than investing in ourselves because we may not see the value in self. So the first step before even trying to build that business, you have to really establish some self-worth. Um, establish who you are, learn what is it that you have that's worth something for somebody to even want to buy. And to ask yourself, why do I want to build a business to begin with? So let's skip from that. Let's say you got your logo made and you shouldn't have to pull out your phone to show somebody your logo unless you're naked. And what I mean by that is you could put your logo on a hat. You can put your business name on your polo or on your jacket or on your t-shirt, whatever it is that you wear. Um, you could put it inside of your watch and have that created if that's what you do. The thing is, is a person should be able to look at you in 30 seconds and be able to tell what you do. Um, you probably would never see me or almost never see me unless on purpose I don't want you to know without me having a Millionaire Ground logo on. You may not know what Millionaire Ground is when you first see it, but that's the first point where you can say, what is Millionaire Ground? You will see a different version of it on the hat, see a different version on my, my chest, and I normally wear a watch that has an MG in it. And, um, and when I give you a business card, it's gonna have a logo on it. Um, when you see my backpack, it's gonna have a logo on it. Um, all of these different things, because that is a lead generator to get a person to be able to ask you, hey, what is that? And when you tell them what it is, now you can tell them what your business do. Um, and they, you may find out right there, somebody needed your service or they needed your product, but they never would have been able to bring that conversation up had they not be able to see that logo on you somewhere. So uh, we do have to make sure that um, once you take the first step, then you do have to go ahead and take the second step. Um, it's impossible to walk forward, but only using one leg and one foot. When you take one step, you have to take the next one in order to be able to keep things moving. And a lot of times people would come to us and they take the first step. And we'll go through the rest of the process for them, making it easy, but they forget to put the other foot in front of the step that they just did. But because that one step is more than they used to, let's say, well, I did something that I ain't, I ain't used to doing yet, so I'm a, uh, this is supposed to come back. And it's like, go through the process. You got to trust the process. Um, if you only take one step on one foot and you hold the rest of your body weight up, naturally you're going to fall anyway. Like if you get off this live and try to stand on one foot and move forward at the same time with one foot, you're going to fall. And that's like people stepping into entrepreneurship, not learning about the rest of the way or not being willing to execute. They're just willing to start. And you have to take that next step, otherwise you're going to fall. And you can't blame nobody but you. So once you get that logo created and once you get out of your own way um, and stop fearing self, because self is the only thing that we fear. Uh, one, and we fear typically what we're not going to do after we take that first step. That's one of the things, and I think it's really the real answer to us getting out of our own way. Um, we want, think, want people to do things for us, but we typically don't want to do it ourselves. And as long as it's free, it's good enough for me. We carry that personality often. But um, I think a real reason why many of us don't want to invest in self, and I don't even think most people don't understand the difference between investing and spending. But I think the real reason why many people don't invest in self is because they know what they're not going to do after they make the initial investment. Spending the money on the front end is the easy part. Uh, setting yourself up to look like something is the easy part, but going through the process and actually doing it and becoming it, even without people knowing that you're doing it or without people giving you the accolades, that's the hard part. And many people are doing things for the look. So, and I often hear people say, um, I want to start my own business so I don't have to work for nobody. Truthfully, when you start your own business, you work for everybody and you work for way more people. And, you know, a lot of people step into entrepreneurship saying, I want more time. The truth is, you're not going to have time when you become an entrepreneur. You're going to work 10 times harder and 10 times longer and 10 times more because if you don't work, you don't eat. So, and that's the importance of the logo. It goes all the way back to that. Everywhere that you go, everything you touch, somebody should be able to identify that you are a business at that point. 
when you become an entrepreneur, you don't have time to stand next to somebody and could have done business with them and don't do it because you know a check coming from your job. You don't have a check coming from a job now. You are the job. You, you are the check. So put that logo on your chest. Put it on your hat. Put it somewhere where people can see it. So when you're standing at the bank, in a place where you typically wouldn't advertise that you have a restaurant or you typically wouldn't advertise that you have a nail salon. Uh, you wouldn't typically advertise in, um, you know, a crab shack that you actually do credit. But if somebody see your logo, they can say, hey, I came here because I was hungry, but when I leave here, I need to get my credit fixed so I can go back and get some crabs. Next time I come here on credit, let me go, fix, let me go get my credit fixed by you because I saw your logo on you. Things like that happen, and that's what setting yourself up in that way does. Uh, the next step is you want to make sure you have business cards, uh, flyers of some sort. And uh, oftentimes I ask people, do you use business cards? They say no, because I'm on Facebook. I tell the person to follow me on social media. Uh, let's say, for example, if you're in a high traffic area and um, someone really want to do business with you, they give, you give them a business card, but they're not in the time or it's not the predicament where they can actually sit and speak with you and talk to you. So what happens then is that you'll give them a card and the importance of it, you want to have your face on the card um, in certain instances because they may remember the conversation, but they remember by face. And if they don't see you on there, then they don't remember who they talk to. They just know, I talked to somebody and it was something I wanted, but the dots don't connect because they might have gotten 10, 20 cards that day and they don't want to call the wrong person. So... Um, having a logo and making sure you use your, your understand that your face is a logo for you as a brand or a business. Um, and that's just it's simply put, you know, it's a simple fundamental that we're not taught all again because we don't have schools for entrepreneurs, which is what led me to the next venture that we have, uh, which is basically we're just going to be doing entrepreneur hangouts uh, here at the Millionaire Grind headquarters. Uh, we have a program that we'll be reintroducing. It's called the Millionaire Grind, Millionaire Grind University. And what this is, is um, different entrepreneurs getting in the room and basically sharing experiences and uh, basically just educating each other in different fields and seeing how we can work together. But uh, yeah, definitely if you're an entrepreneur, um, you need a logo. Um, even if you're an artist, you need a logo. Uh, you are a business. You don't have to be a brick and mortar business to have a, a logo. So if you're an artist and your name is John Doe, everything that John Doe rights on an album is something that may be worthy of putting on maybe a t-shirt or something else and john doe as an artist he's popular so somebody else that has a business to understand what they have they're going to go to john doe and say hey can i get you to wear my t-shirt can i get you to be in my commercial so we can sell our product but if john doe has that capability to bring that to somebody else john doe can actually do that for himself and be able to build his own business because as an artist you are a business meaning people are paying you for music, that's your product. But because we used to be signed by record labels, we didn't look at ourselves as businesses. They did. They would get an EIN number on you, and they would take out a business loan and give you a piece of that and call it an advance. And you have to go work the rest of your life or the rest of your time to try to make that money back using the music as a product. But you didn't understand you was a business because you thought you were just the artist. But now the artist is finding out that, hey, I'm a I'm in the music business. I gotta make money. And that's the people that understand their business, they get it and they'll do something different. But the ones that say, I just wanna make music. That's cool. You just make music, but you might be broke. The reason why? Because you're only looking at yourself as that. Which is why you don't even think you as John Doe the artist need a John Doe logo. Because you don't understand that John Doe is a business and not just an artist. So let's say you as John Doe, since we got that name going. You make a John Doe logo and you put it on a t-shirt. Now people are familiar with that. And now on every album you put out, you can put that John Doe logo on there. And now you may have a punchline that you said from one of your songs that you put on a shirt. And now you can take that simple logo and stamp it on the shirt. And now you sell on a t-shirt with a quote on it, but they're familiar with a logo so they can say, hey, that's John Doe. Shirt may not even say John Doe. It may just have a JD logo on it. But people are familiar with it at that point, and now you have a successful business, and anything that you touch, you can put that on there. Now people don't have to say, "Now you know my dude such and such." They can see something that you had that somebody else had with your stuff on it, and places you've never been, and now that actually spreads your brand further, and your lyrics actually will go further because you're putting your lyrics on T-shirts, and that's a way to get your music more popular as an artist. 
because if a person may not like the way you sound, they may not like the beat that you choose. They may not want to listen to you because they are artists, but they may see the lyrics on the shade and read it and it catch their attention. And now that drives them to want to know more about where they come from. And now they have to listen to the song. Or you may, um, so all of these different things are basically just advice I'm trying to give um, so more people can understand that we are holding us back. And we have to get out of our own way. But until the scared you get out of your own way, the real brave you will never get where you're trying to go because you're being blocked by the scared you. So um, that's pretty much my message for today. Um, the question again, and you can put it down below in the comments. So after the video, we still will keep the conversation going. Uh, the first question from the first video, but we still want to answer it here is, what is it going to take for us to get out of our own way? And um, the other part of it is, it's not necessarily a question, but just think about the importance of branding and marketing whenever you're trying to build any business. Because if nobody know who you are, they can't do business with you to begin with. No matter how good your product is, no matter how many people know you in your neighborhood, and no matter how, um, whatever the case may be, if you don't put your logo in places that you're not, people that are already in places that are, are not where you are are gonna come where you are. You can only, you would only be able to get to the people that already know you. So you have to do that part and then you can start putting it on merchandise. And you know, let's say you have a, a water bottle company. You can put your logo on your water bottles now and people know what company those things, their water come from. And depending on the quality of you as a person and what they know you put out, that's how they know they can trust their bottle of water based on where it comes from. And that's what separates it. So take those things more serious and hopefully this information helps somebody. And if you like this information and uh, want more, or if you're ready to build a business, hit me up in the inbox. Uh, we're here. We're making a difference here in Memphis, and we really are devoted.